The Philippine National Police confirms the presence of the ISIS-inspired Maute group in Metro Manila. PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa says National Capital Region cops were able to intercept an improvised explosive device that would have been used for a terror attack. The PNP on Monday night arrested Nasip Ibrahim, a 35-year-old owner of a sari-sari store in Barangay Kulyat, Quezon City, after the police and the military tried to serve a search warrant against a man named Jamil Baha Tawil for illegal possession of firearms. Tawil is supposedly a suspected ally of the Maute group and was living in Ibrahim's home. Cops weren't able to find Tawil but supposedly found handguns, an IED, and seven plastic sachets of illegal drug shabu or methamphetamine. Ibrahim allegedly coddled terror suspects, facilitating their accommodations in Quezon City for a foiled attempt against the United States Embassy last November. He also allegedly served as a driver of the vehicle used to transport the suspects. De La Rosa says, quote, The discovery leads us to believe that the Mauti group has already established a presence in Metro Manila. But the military contradicts the PNP, saying it has not monitored the presence of Mauti group members in Metro Manila. The military has been fighting the local terrorist group in central Mindanao and closely monitoring its movements. Newly appointed Supreme Court Justice Noel Tiham raises the possibility of the Sandigan Bayan drowning in cases if the High Court rules in favor of detained Senator Laila de Lima and sends all similar cases to the anti-graft court. Tiham, during the second round of oral arguments on Tuesday, says there are only 21 justices in the Sandigan Bayan and they may be exposed to a floodgate of cases if they favor de Lima. He says, quote, If we rule that officers above salary grade 27 fall under Sandigan Bayan, many cases will then be transferred to Sandigan Bayan. De Lima is petitioning the SC to put her case under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan and not the Montinlupa Regional Trial Court, which is handling all three drug trade charges against her. Justice Francis Hardeleza agrees with Tiham and tells former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay, who represents De Lima, to produce data to prove to the High Court that there will not be a floodgate of cases should they get a favorable ruling. Deputy Speaker Miro Kimbo, a Liberal Party stalwart, says the first impeachment complaint filed against President Rodrigo Duterte and the planned complaint against Vice President Leno Robredo will both fail in Congress. Kimbo says Magdalo Representative Gary Alejano's impeachment complaint against Duterte will not prosper given the President's popularity. He adds the President enjoys strong support in the House, where at least 217 lawmakers are allied with the ruling PDP Laban. Kimbo also doubts the impeachment complaint against Robredo will survive the House. Lawyer Oliver Lozano and broadcaster Melchor Chavez, both Marcos loyalists, had sent a six-page impeachment complaint against Robredo to the office of Alvarez. They are accusing the Vice President of culpable violation of the Constitution and betrayal of public trust after she sent a video criticizing the ongoing war against drugs before the United Nations. The LP may be a vast minority in the House, but yung dami ng matatalinong congressman, napakarami naman dito sa House, na sigurado ako hindi magpapagamit sa usaping ito. Ousted South Korean President Park Geun-hye is questioned by prosecutors Tuesday over the corruption and abuse of power scandal that brought her down. Park apologizes to the public as she arrived at the prosecutor's office in Seoul. She says, quote, I will undergo the investigation sincerely. Park was impeached by parliament in December as millions of people took to the streets to demand her removal over the scandal. Her removal was confirmed by the country's top court earlier this month. Questioning by prosecutors is a key step in South Korea's judicial process before a suspect is charged. It can last for many hours late into the night and can be repeated if officials deem it necessary. Federal Bureau of Investigation Chief James Comey deals United States President Donald Trump a double blow Monday. Comey confirms a probe into Trump's election campaign links to Russia last year. He also belies the president's claim that he was wiretapped by predecessor Barack Obama. I have been authorized by the Department of Justice to confirm that the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government, and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. Comey refuses to answer the questions of the House Intelligence Committee about exactly what and who its probe involves, citing the need to protect a sensitive counterintelligence investigation. The FBI chief's statement undercuts a White House effort to dismiss the controversy. Comey also shoots down wiretapping allegations on Trump Tower. 
He says, quote, The Department of Justice has asked me to share with you that the answer is the same for the Department of Justice and all of its components. The Department has no information that supports those tweets. Mm-hmm.